There it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew. Uh, those who don't recognize me because I haven't been here in a while, I'm Jim. Um, and yep, I, something just struck my mind. Um, I now know what the snowbirds feel like. It, I've been gone for almost two months because of scout camp and I really miss you people. <laughs> I miss St. Andrew, I miss everything that, that uh, that St. Andrew is all about. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be back here. Um, so, an announcements from the congregation, are there any? Yes. Okay, where's the, where's, where's the switch on the bottom? Thank you. Maybe it works. Maybe. Oh, it oh. does work. Good morning. Um, I'm going to pick what I can during the worship service, but we have these gorgeous, really fat cucumbers. Um, if you make pickles, please consider taking a whole bunch because these would be great for sandwich slicers. And there's also a bunch of green beans. So after church, plan to take some home with you to share with neighbors or for yourself, um, or also maybe both and plan to pick some off the plants too because the garden is very abundant right now that is absolutely true when i left it was just getting planted and it's it's a veritable jungle out there uh so other other uh, announcements from the congregation beautiful day, beautiful day it sure is <laughs> i would like to introduce for our temple talk Ken Hugerhide, who's from the Lowe's and Fishes um, Food Pantry. Welcome, Ken. Well, it's good to be here this morning, isn't it? Also want to thank you for letting me come here. Um, Pastor Vogel's been trying to get us for a, a little while since you all visited with us for your coffee hour. Um, I think he's been trying to schedule us in, but this falls in very nicely with your stewardship month. Stewardship is a special thing that we have with God, a special relationship. All that we do, and if I can read that um, passage to you, I've actually got two, and I've got the one that you've been looking at all month, and then I'll give you another one. Hebrews 13, 16 says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Mine is something different. Well, we showed one of the priests his first time here in this area. We showed him around the, the old food pantry and the verse he quoted as he walked through the pantry, not once, not twice, probably about 10 times as he quoted was this, Matthew 25, 40. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for the one, for one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. That fits very nicely in with your stewardship. And on behalf of Loaves and Fishes, myself as manager, as a trustee, I wanna thank you, this congregation, for all that you have done in the past. For loaves and fishes, your church, whether you know it or not, some of you might, some, most of you do, was uh, an integral part of starting loaves and fishes. Your pastor and the pastor of St. Joseph's, two different faiths, two, two faiths that are different in practice, got together. I, I don't know how long they spent in time to, to to start up loaves and fishes by putting it all together, but started from what I've heard, I've heard in a shed and went from a shed to a basement, from a basement to a small building that we're in now. I say small, there's tiny houses today that they build that are uh, a whole lot smaller. We're at 1200 square feet in the building we're at now. And September 26, we begin a move to an 8,200 square foot building. So we are also blessed. 
blessed by what you have done as a congregation and others. Um, we can't do without you. God is using you in a positive way in your volunteering for loaves and fishes, in your gifts, whether it be money or food. We're coming up on um, an economy that we're in kind of a denial that it's not so bad, but it is. We can tell by the numbers that are coming through. Since the first of the year, through the end of July, we have hit all of the people that we have served last year in numbers, and we still have five months to go. The number of people coming in uh, monthly is almost overwhelming in a small pantry. That's why we're anxious and excited to be able to move into a larger space to help these people. Um, it's progressing. If you haven't seen it lately, I know you had your coffee hour there and you saw it. I believe there was no floor in there. There's a floor in there now. There's some dividers. There's a freezer and a cooler. It's all coming together. We're getting more and more donations of food from individuals like yourself. We certainly do appreciate it. Moving to a new facility, especially a large one that we have. Um, we're going to need more volunteers. <laughs> Volunteering is sometimes not easy. And a lot of times it's mostly joyful to do it. I try my best to be uh, happy <laughs> every day. There are some things which make me angry, but I try to hold that back. God doesn't want me to be angry about anything, but he understands it. Because of the sin in myself, it's going to be there. But we try to make it as joyful as possible to be a volunteer. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's easy, but know that you're serving the Lord in a very, very positive way in volunteering for loaves and fishes. Um, I'll be here for coffee hour if somebody guides me to where it is, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. If you uh, want to volunteer, don't have the internet, call us, I'll send you an application talk to you about what's available. Again, we are very, very grateful that your church is a member of our community, just like we are a member of yours. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you again on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, welcome to all. It's a little bit cooler uh, this Sunday uh, over last Sunday, so we're grateful for that. Let all who are able please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table when met by those in need. We have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading today is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? For who can hide in secret places that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fear, fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the, the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. Who, what has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm today is psalm number 82. It will be spoken responsibly. God stands to charge the divine council assembled, giving judgment in the midst of the gods. Oh, judge unjustly and show favor to the weak. Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and the needy. They do not know, neither do they understand. They wander about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the most high. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals, and fall like any prince. Rise of God, you shall take all nations from the earth. <clears throat> Children's time for all ages. I was going to, uh, I, I don't see any children in the sanctuary, but if there are children listening on Zoom, let me ask you, how would you like to go to the moon and back? How would you like to travel to the moon and back? <laughs> That's becoming... Um, a more and more uh, of a possibility. Uh, it's 
probably will not happen in my generation, but in coming generations, uh, that might be an opportunity for you. Of course, you might need uh, a lot of money to do that too. But 53 years ago, I was sitting in front of the TV, uh, glued to the TV actually, watching uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they uh, descended, as their spacecraft descended to the surface of the moon. That, that happened in July of 1969. However, the preparations for that had been going on for quite some time, for many years prior to that. It was decided that it would be simpler and require less fuel if they only sent part of the ship to the moon while the other part remained in orbit above the, the moon. After landing on the moon, uh, part of the landing craft would be left behind while the other part would rejoin the command module. But that meant they had to figure out a way for the ships to meet and dock in space. And no one was quite sure how to do it. Eventually, uh, scientists and engineers figured out that uh, you couldn't just put one ship or point one ship at the other and speed up to catch up. That doesn't work. It was discovered that in order to catch up with another ship in space, you actually needed to slow down. When you slowed down, you went into a lower orbit, which meant you had less distance to travel, and that's how you caught up. So if you wanted to go faster, you had to do the one thing that doesn't make any sense, and that's to slow down. Sometimes uh, Jesus talked that way too, in, in ways that kind of defy common sense. Jesus, uh, one time he was teaching his disciples and he said, if you want to be first, you have to be last. Huh? What does that mean? Here's what he meant. Some people want to look important, so they act like they are better than everyone else. But that doesn't make people more important, according to Jesus. If you want to make, if you want to be more important, Jesus said, become a servant, be a servant, and take care of other people people. So be important by being a servant. There's a hymn that um, I'm familiar with, I, I don't know if you are, but it is entitled, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant? And let me just quote the first line in closing. Won't you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Amen. The second reading today is from the book of the letter of to Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and of David and Samuel and all the prophets, who through faith 
conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurre resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death and they were sawn, sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And he has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. <clears throat> Let us rise uh, for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 12. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, fire in one household will be, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you on this Lord's Day. Here we are in August on a beautiful summer Sunday, and it has been a banner year for travel. Despite the high ga gas prices and many uh, cancellations and delays in the airline industry. So I know that many of you have uh, packed everyone and everything in your cars or perhaps hopped on a plane and journeyed to see distant relatives or headed to your favorite vacation spot. Some of my fondest memories as a child are of our family's vacation journeys. 
Those were the times when being in the family became an adventure. We left the humdrum routine of the familiar and the ordinary and ventured forth into unknown regions like Florida and the Great Smoky Mountains. We sampled strange food and encountered memorable people whom we never would have met if we had stayed home. Even parents whose uh, job was to keep us uh, young'uns in line and on schedule, even they became fellow adventurers and explorers. It's great to be on these summer journeys. How appropriate then on this summer Sunday to come to church and be reminded that much of the Bible is concerned with people on a journey. The story of God's people, Israel, begins with the journey of an old couple, Abraham and Sarah. Abraham ventures forth, uh, as the letter to the Hebrews puts it, quote, without knowing where he was going, unquote. They venture forth, not only geographically to a different location on the map, but also spiritually to a different location in their inner world. Abraham had been promised that he would be the father of a great nation, even though Sarah uh, quote, was barren and past the age for having children. And even though uh, Abraham was, as Hebrew puts it, uh, and none too delicately, as good as dead. Yet by the power of God, Abraham and Sarah were given a child, a future they didn't know they would have and the family of, of Israel was born. Then through a weird set of events that I, don't, that I don't really have time to go into this morning, Abraham and Sarah's descendants become enslaved in Egypt. In slavery, the work was hard and unrelenting. Even so, some adjusted to their new lifestyle. After all, they enjoyed three square meals a day. Yet God heard the cries of the slaves and called Moses to lead them out of slavery. A fresh new journey began, the journey called the Exodus, that went, uh, as you know, through the Red Sea. The third great journey of the Hebrew Scriptures is the journey out of exile. Those who were once slaves and had made themselves a home in the promised land became slaves again as their beloved Jerusalem was destroyed and the whole nation was deported to Babylon in exile. There were those Hebrews who said Babylonia wasn't all that bad. Why don't we just settle down, assimilate, and adjust to the lifestyle and culture of our captives, they, they asked. But God had other plans. God returned to the chosen people. The Hebrews were liberated, and they journeyed back home. God was with them. They had a great homecoming, and their beloved Jerusalem was eventually rebuilt. So we have a God, the God of Israel, who beckons, calls forth, and pushes us out on journeys. So we really should not be surprised to find that the Gospels, including uh, the Gospel of Luke that we have been uh, reading all of this year, presents uh, Jesus as being on a perpetual road trip. Then there are the disciples, the followers after Jesus. Followers of Jesus move with Jesus, attempting to keep up with him as he goes from place to place. Discipleship means 
being on the road with Jesus. So let me stop here and ask a question. Does this image of being on a journey with Jesus characterize your relationship with Christ? Does that image of being on a journey resonate with you? Well, it may or may not. Uh, let's be honest. There is something about us that yearns to have faith all fixed and tied down. For example, uh, many times we want our faith to be encapsulated in a, in a uh, series of beliefs or a set of beliefs or propositions about God. Uh, here are 10 statements the church believes about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, affirm these 10 beliefs and then you can go out and call yourself a Christian. <laughs> now, be sure to hear me correctly. Be sure you hear me correctly. I'm not saying we don't need beliefs and creeds. They are very important in helping us understand and make sense of our faith. Uh, they are like directional markers pointing the way to Christ. Christianity is more than understanding a book about Jesus. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews speaks of faith as being much more dynamic than a static, fixed kind of faith. The writer speaks of faith in action, faith as a journey in which people, having been met by God, venture forth with God. We are thereby invited to think about faith not as a list of questions and answers in a catechism, but rather as a journey. Faith is a venturing forth with God, just like Abraham and Sarah, with ups and downs, hills and valleys. Faith is vital to us, that is life-giving. If, if it is active, it grows and matures and, and spreads its branches just like any tree. Let me cite two personal examples. I once thought of the Bible as a book, simply a book that contained a lot of helpful material that could be useful to me in daily life. It could transform me into a more moral person, certainly a wiser person, I thought. And then one day it hit me. The Bible doesn't exists just to meet my needs. The Bible isn't about me. The Bible is a book about God and what God wants to accomplish on this earth by bringing God's kingdom to this earth. Another example, at one point I had the notion that uh, faith is something uh, just between me and Jesus. A, a personal one-to-one -one relationship. Again, that harkens back to me and my personal needs, doesn't it? That may be the way faith has happened for many people, but I now have the conviction that faith in Christ means getting beyond my personal needs to join Christ in mission to the world. Faith is more of a, of a matter of our life together. Here in church, we spend uh, much of our time nurturing and recalling the past. Surrounded as we are by, quote, a great cloud of witnesses from the past who have preceded us. But as Hebrews says, it's the nature of faith to look toward the future, 
to be leaning toward God's promises that have not yet been fulfilled, but promises which we have, which we by faith will be fulfilled by God. Think about the people who by faith founded uh, this church. Imagine what it was like for them to say, we think God wants us to venture forth and build a church where there isn't any. Can you see those folks in your mind's eye? Uh, perhaps meeting in someone's living room or uh, planning and strategizing together. Uh, where did they come up with the money to gather a church and then to build this uh, marvelous sanctuary? Surely there, there were doubts. Uh, probably some said, well, it's going to be too expensive. There may be not enough people to come. Others might have said, well, there's not enough people with financial means, and on and on and on. Yet they persevered. They had faith. They kept their eyes fixed on the future. They were not overwhelmed by what they didn't know of the future. They did not demand that God work on their timeline. They learned to measure success one small step at a time. As Hebrews implies, if God were fully comprehensible, if the ways of God were completely understandable, there would be no need for faith. Would we even be talking about God up here in the pulpit? Probably not. Faith in Christ is more a matter like it was for old Abraham and Sarah. It's a matter of venturing forth. Even though you don't yet have all the evidence you might like to have, faith is walking with God of being on the way even if the final destination is in the hands of God. Your pastor, uh, Pastor John, has asked me to say a word or two about stewardship this month. And in some ways, stewardship is a lot like faith. Isn't stewardship, just like faith, a matter of trust? There's an old hymn uh, that we used to sing, We give thee but thine own. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. We trust that God will continue to do what God has always done, to provide beautiful, bounteous blessings. And then we turn right around and give back or entrust to God our first fruits, uh, to use biblical language. In other words, a tithe. Everything we have comes from God and in a very well, real way still belongs to God. We are God's caretakers of what has been entrusted to us for a time. When we share with the church or when we share with those who have less, we are sharing something that was never really ours in the first place. I said also that faith is forward-looking. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, says Hebrews. So is stewardship. When you donate money towards uh, uh, the new playground equipment, as you have been doing, you are saying, in effect, the future matters. It is important that we do this for the future of the church. And so it is. And now it is our task to go forth from this place in faith. Amen.
Please rise as we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe. 
and bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Arise, O God, and su sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are opp oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Arise, O oh God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. We lift before you particular situations or peoples, either aloud, silently, or by chat. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of all nations, we lift before you the people of the Ukraine. Amen. We ask your people at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and compassion may reign. Merciful God, Receive our, our prayer. prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race that is set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. And receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share Christian greetings with those around you with horns in the parking lot. Peace be with you, everyone. Morning. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Ruth. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you. Hi, Peter. Peace, everybody. And now let us continue with the offering.
Is anyone else unmuted? Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up to the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, 
with the earth and all of its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Seated.
bread of Christ broken for you. <clears throat> for those in the parking lot and on Zoom, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ broken and shed for you. Amen. As you are able, please rise. <clears throat> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now, send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of all peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.